guys to declare a recess at any time. We thank you all for being here. It's an important uh, hearing on a, a topic that has gone on for far too long. Uh, we had the death of uh, one of our bravest, uh, one of our best in Brian Terry, and uh, uh, this government, uh, as I have said many, many times before, is different than most other governments in the world, and that is we are self-critical. We do look hard at things that have happened and that have gone wrong to make sure that the truth is exposed and that we don't ever make these mistakes um, and errors again. Uh, we are also, as a committee and staff, uh, re uh, issuing a, 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 I think it's 259-page uh, report. Uh, I want to thank a few people and so we get into this. Uh, I want to thank uh, John Skladany, uh, Steve Castor. Steve has spent an exceptional amount of time on this, as well as Tristan Levitt, who's sitting here to my left, Cordell Hull, uh, Jack Thorland, uh, Natalie Turner, Mike Howell, and Rebecca Edgar, we, a lot of people on our staff that spend countless hours uh, working on these topics, and we thank them for their uh, preparation of this report that we're issuing today. Uh, we're here to check in on one of the longest running congressional oversight and investigative matters of our time, uh, an operation called Operation Fast and Furious. Congress is now in its seventh year in search of a complete accounting of the facts relating to the reckless gun trafficking operation that left Border Patrol agent Brian Terry murdered. This happened on December 14th, 2010, 2010, and we still don't have all the answers. At the scene of Agent Terry's murder in 2010, two modified AK-47 type assault rifles were recovered. The weapons were traced to Operation Fast and Furious. The strategy of this failed operation, encouraged by the Department of Justice, was to focus the resources the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms on Mexican drug cartels rather than low-level straw gun purchasers. As such, a program was born that allowed straw purchasers to supply Mexican drug cartels with firearms. Purchasing a firearm for someone other than yourself is illegal. The shocking endgame of this misguided plan was to identify cartel members after guns recovered at crime scenes traced back to their original place of purchase. Absent from this strategy was any modicum of public safety. ATF failed in its mission to protect our communities from violent criminals and the illegal use of trafficking of firearms. Let's keep in mind, these were nearly 2,000 weapons that they knowingly and willingly let out onto the, to the streets. Agent Terry's family who's here and will participate in the second panel should not have to wait more than six years for answers and accountability. We're grateful they're here and we look forward to hearing their story again in their, the second panel. Our committee began its work in February 2011 under the uh, leadership of Chairman Darrell Issa. After partnering with uh, Senator Grassley to evaluate unfathomable whistleblower accounts and documents coming out of ATF in Phoenix, Arizona. Both Chairman Grassley and Chairman Issa uh, helped lead the charge and we're very grateful for their, their efforts and look forward to hearing uh, more from both uh, today. Several Phoenix-based ATF special agents expressed skepticism and disbelief about the program as it went against everything they were trained to do and violated their law enforcement oath to protect the public. Special, special agent John Dodson, who is with us today, was one of those agents. Without uh, uh, Agent Dodson's determination to do the right thing, surely many more thousands of firearms would have walked, leading to addition, additional deaths. We should be thanked, he should be thanked, I should say, by the Department of Justice, the ATF, and by all of us. But as Agent Dodson will tell us today, a different story, however, happened. His employer was not treating him as a hero, as the committee with the responsibility for oversight of federal whistleblower policy, we must continue to shine the light on John Dodson's story. The congressional investigation also led to a well-chronicled impasse between two equal branches of government. In June 2012, the House of Representatives held former Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt for failing to turn over documents relating to the investigation. The House successfully compelled the production of many of these documents in federal court. In two separate judicial victories, the committee received approximately 80,000 pages of new documents from the Department of Justice. And again, the Department of Justice didn't want Congress to see them and certainly didn't want the public to see them. However, it should, uh, it should not take years and endless expensive litigation for the executive branch to cooperate with proper congressional oversight. 
We still require additional documents, and litigation is ongoing as DOG, the Department of Justice continues its unprecedented stonewalling of Congress and the Terry family. And I'm sorry to report, under the Trump administration, this has not changed. This has not changed. In previous testimony before Congress, former Attorney General Holder committed to getting the Terry family the answers and explanations they needed. But when the television lights went off, that did not happen. In fact, the opposite happened. The Obama administration Justice Department went so far as to litigate against the Terry family. The Justice Department wrote briefs and argued in federal court against the family's efforts to intervene as a crime victim in the fast and furious prosecutions. It's a travesty of justice. We look forward to hearing from Senator Grassley, Special Agent Dodson, and members of Brian, Tan uh, Brian Terry's family, including his mother and his cousin, Robert Hire. We look forward to hearing their accounts and perspectives from a vantage point six years later. Uh, but right now, we're, we're pleased to have uh, uh, serving as the ranking member today, Mr. Lynch, the gentleman from Massachusetts, and we'll yield to as much time as he, he needs. Uh, Mr. Lynch, you're now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and uh, Senator Grashley, you honor us by your presence here this morning. Uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the life and courageous service